Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to use the sine and cosine functions to create an octagon. So up to this point, we've been using these functions to get points along a circle, whether it's a unit circle or otherwise. But an octagon or a pentagon or a hexagon or something, if it was centered here at this location, the points of those n-gons would actually lie on a circle as well. So since they lie on the circle, we can use the sine and cosine functions to create it. So what I'll do first is maybe I'll get rid of this circle and start with a square. So maybe if I had an octagon, I'd have eight points, one starting here. One would be up here somewhere at 45 degrees, or pi over 4, another one here, all the way around the circle like this. But I'll start with a square instead, and I'll show you why. Let me see. I'll add a plane to the scene. I'll give it the same color here, like that. Okay, so now I'll go into edit mode and I'll subdivide it once. And now I have points that I can manipulate out here. So in the previous videos we've been working in object mode and changing the dimensions to affect the shape. But now what I'll do is within edit mode I'll just go up here and grab a corner like this and then I'll change the vertex position up in here. So it's going to be the same as before so this is going to be the cosine of pi divided by 4 and this will be the sine of pi divided by 4. Okay, and then this over here is going to be the cosine of 3 fourths pi, 3 fourths of the way to the pi location. And this will be the sine of 3 fourths pi like that. And you can see the octagon starting to take, sh take shape already. Okay, now I've actually posted this video before and I made a mistake when I was going around the circle and because I was counting it as one-eighth in eighths all the way around. And that's because one thing I wanted to point out is sometimes I use tau instead of pi. There's a movement that's going on in the world, has been for a number of years now, about some people prefer to use a Greek letter tau to represent the circle instead of pi. Pi being over here at 3.14, but tau being all the way around the circle. So you represent the circle as points relative to tau. So if you happen to do that, you can actually use Python to your advantage in this case. So I might just define down here with my Python expressions, I would define tau is equal to 2 times pi, like this. Suddenly I have a new variable. This so then, I can't use tau in this expression up here because it doesn't know about it in Blender, but it's something to be aware of it within Python because you can just create variables on the fly like this. So suddenly tau is redefined. So if I wanted to find out what this point was, say the sine of this value in terms of tau, then it would be the sine of tau divided by 8 versus pi divided by 4 and then I do it and then there's, there's my value 0 0.707 like this. Okay, well so that's what threw me in the last video. So now let's continue with this point. So this point we're going to still have to represent this in terms of pi for these expressions up here. So this is going to be you know pi over 4, pi over 2, so 1 fourth of the way to pi, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, 8 fourths would be 2 pi like this. So it can be represented in either two ways. I could either represent it as the cosine of 5 fourths times pi like this and I could do it as the sine of 5 fourths times pi like that and there there's my point but you can alternatively represent it using negative angles like I've mentioned it before you could start at this location and you could move this direction and then this direction in a negative angle would be just like this is three quarters of the way to the pi location this would be negative three fourths pi so I could just re-enter this as cosine of negative 0.75 times pi and you'll see that it same point doesn't go anywhere. In fact we can do it on this point here. We'll use this as a negative angle. This would be pi over 4 here but this would be negative pi over 4 if we wanted to use negative angles. So all I'll do is cosine of negative pi divided by 4 and then the sine of negative pi divided by 4 like that. Alright and there we have our octagon taking shape. So you could do make all kinds of other primitives. You could do hexagons, pentagons, just dividing up the circle into how many 
angles you need. And the one advantage of doing it this way, of course, if you you could just always add a cylinder to the scene and have it divided into eight sections here, and then you could create your octagon that way by taking out the top or bottom face of that cylinder or that octagon. But this gives you the advantage that you could actually modify these points. You could modify the radial distance of these points as you're going, so you could maybe make each point a little bit further out, and you would essentially start creating spiral effects. So there's definitely an advantage to have, being able to have control of the individual vertices like this. Okay, well that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.